name of Yahuwah is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. When you join us on the Sabbath day, remembering to keep it Gadosh. Amen and Amen. Cannot be interrupted. And I'm thankful for every one of you that are here with us on the chat, uh, gathering together and blessing one another. I pray you were blessed by the scripture reading and are now coming together for our assembly meeting. And I tell you, it has been a wonderful, wonderful blessing to see the growth, to see the awakening. Uh, we are so excited for every one of you that are now coming in and are part of Elohim's great awakening. And as a matter of fact, uh, this coming, tomorrow night, Yom Rishan, uh, we'll be doing a meeting with our brother Jerael Toma. We'll be talking about just that, the Echad and the great awakening of Yahuwah's people in this time. So join us for that. It'll be a blessed discussion, and I'm sure it will encourage you. And we've been talking over the last three weeks about the assembly. And this has really been a blessing. We've seen a lot of uh, amazing revelation. Elohim has instructed us about a few things, but he's also reminded us of how important it is for us to move out of dependency and out of independence into interdependence, becoming echad, yep. united, depending on each other, on one another to finish our course. Yep. After all, your gift is not for you. Amen. I'll say it again. Your gift is not for you. It is yep. for your brother. And it's a good thing, too, that he did that. Because if he didn't, why most people would have stayed home, got the anointing, stayed home, and just blessed themselves. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm just so blessed. I'm so, oh, let me pray for myself. Oh, 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 my. Right? Okay, that's not. That's why he designed it the way he did. That's right. Because otherwise, you would never leave your home. you just bless right. yourself all the time. <laughs> Amen. And he designed us to meet, to need one another, yes. to depend on each other, oh, and need each one another's anointing and gift things and, and blessings that each unique vessel in the kingdom presents as part of the body of Mashiach. Amen. Okay. And don't call anybody an extra part. You know, for years they didn't know what the appendix did. They didn't know what a lot of things. Just because they don't know what it does doesn't mean it isn't important. I mean, just because they may not understand your gift, just because they may not understand your anointing, just because they may not understand why you're here and why you're blocking sun. Don't you let anybody tell you you're an extra part. You are important. You are part of the body. We need every one of you. Somebody say amen. amen. And so I'm so grateful for the lessons that we've learned to this point. Uh, the first week we discovered that the assembly in fact exists and it's not. A circus. Yep, that's right. Okay, and it's not just some goofy gathering that means nothing. It has significance. Secondly, we learned that it had been stolen from us, that power was stolen from us, that uh, those in the world who were never ordained by Elohim to govern are governing using your authority. Many of you are awakening to that, and it is causing quite a rumble in the earth. And I love the sight of your sovereignty. 
I love the sight of your sovereignty. I love that you are awakening to who you are and, and, rem and retaining your power. After all, no one out there in the world has the authority given to the assembly. Amen. And then last week we talked about uh, how do we start to heal from some of those things and how do we recover uh, some of that. And today um, we're going to be discussing the government of Elohim. And, and this is the conclusion of this discussion. I pray it's been a blessing to you. I hope you all have enjoyed this walk to this point. And I, I know that uh, we have much more in discussions in this area, but we needed to lay a good foundation so that those coming in who could listen and understand will know that we take these things very seriously, that we don't think uh, like the ones in the circus think. And uh, as Elohim instructs us, we continue to follow. And we see that, of course, as we've been talking, that the assembly is a, not a new concept. It's not something that was introduced 2,000 years ago. But in fact, even in the book of Hebrews, speaks of the assembly in the wilderness. And as they uh, assembled in Egypt, he pulls them out and pulls them onto themselves. And so we've seen a lot of that. And now we're going to take another portion of this as we look at the government of Yahuwah Sebaot. And that is you, the remnant. You are the ones that when you pray, he hears. He doesn't hear everybody else because he only will listen to his authorized. This is why you must come in under and in authority. You must come in authorized. You can't come any way you want to. You can't pick your own door and say, I'm coming this way. I, you know, I know that's the one door that he said I had to go. But, you know, what about this one? Isn't this one all right? You can come into contracts, but not covenant. Some of you will yeah. figure that out. Mm -hmm. You can come into contracts, but not covenant. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some of you don't realize the difference. And so you saw some things happen that were positive in contract and thinking, Hey, I'm good. No, you need to move into covenant. That's why you're seeing people getting water baptized in the name of Yahusha. Mm -hmm. That's why they're walking away from anything that's keeping them from that. And I commend you. Your courage is exemplary. And those of you that have had to walk away, those of you that were rejected, if churchianity wants to send any of its rejects to the remnant, we'll take them. Come on over. Amen. Because you just won't <laughs> toe the party line. Because you won't look the other way on lies, deceit, yes. and manipulation. Come on, because you won't uh, join in on That's their right. uh, uh, pharisaical nonsense. Come on. Because you continue to study to show yourself approved. A workman who need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Because of that, they threw you out. Well, I'm glad. Now you're free. Come on. Yep. Hello. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's get together and let's get to work. Amen. Let's do the Amen. thing Elohim's called us to do because... After all, we don't, want to, we don't want to persuade anybody. How many know that persuasion is why we got into this mess? No, no. We don't debate. We're not going to argue. Debate is the fruit of the reprobate mind. Instead, we're going to walk in the truth and be good examples. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. And when there is a controversy, well, I got a lot of land. Mm -hmm. And I've got an altar. And you can build your altar, and I'll build my altar, and we'll let Elohim decide the matter. Amen. Selah. Amen. So we don't debate. We let Elohim clear matters up. Amen. Okay? And so today, uh, we're coming in for a conclusion, and I'm so excited about this word. Because, again, there are things that were hidden from you. And how many of you are, are when you're waking up, some of you out here, you've awakened, and you're, you're going, man, I'm really struggling with not being really upset about everything that I'm learning. That is normal. Okay, first was the denial. Remember that? Remember when you were just, no, 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 can't be. Remember that? Remember that? Remember? You remember. Come on. You remember. <laughs> denial, denial, denial. You remember that? Man, that was everybody. Nobody got out of that one. Yeah. We all did that. No, no way. No way. Right? right? Yeah. Everybody. We all did. Everybody. Yeah. And then, and then, we all had that anger moment. Like, yeah. Those dirty, rotten scoundrels, right? Like, oh, we had more words than that. But you know what I mean. We were upset, okay? How dare they? And, and you go through this, and some people stay there for a while, and I don't blame you. I really don't. 
Because when you get lied to, when you find out that your family was lied to, that your ancestors were lied to, that whole generations were lied to, you want more than your lunch break. I'll just say that, all right? Sure. You get upset, okay? And I do not blame you. I, 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 I'm with you on that. We feel exactly that, and we know what that, that process is. It's not easy. No. Anybody's been through it. Yeah. Okay? And then comes the bargaining, right? That's yeah. the next phase. So once yeah. we get done with that, all right, we get finally get done being mad at him. Like, all right, all right. But you know, this is all right because he knows my heart, and right. and oh, you know, but he knows, and I'm 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 okay, right? And that goes for a little while. Oh, sometimes you'll say both. Mm -hmm. You'll have the false name and the true name. The false name, you're bouncing back and forth like you're halt between two opinions. Yeah. That's called bargaining. Yep. That's when you're still negotiating, thinking that you can still pull things from Egypt and bring them with, and. And then that fails. Yep. Then that starts sure. to wane, you know. He gives you a little grace because he knows it's hard. But he starts pulling you further. And then you get into a little bit of a depression because you're saying goodbye yeah. to things that you thought were correct. Yeah. It's like saying goodbye to an old friend. Yeah. Okay? And that's exactly why lies are hard to get through. Because they're stubborn, like idolatry. And any time that you were caught and tricked into idolatry, you were also tricked into stubbornness. Yeah, that's where it came from. That stubbornness, that resistant against the truth feeling came from that. That's why you have to renounce it. Once you do, that clearance occurs and then finally you come to acceptance and you move all the way over. You Hebrew. You cross over all the way, not halfway, not part way, not sort of, kind of, all the way over. That's right. And that is when you're free. Somebody say amen. Amen. So if you're in the middle of that process right now, maybe you're in the anger phase. Maybe you're still in denial. That's okay. Because you, at least you're on the road. Okay. So somebody going, what? No, that can't. No. They're on the road, whether they like it or not. They just went through phase one. So if you got a spouse going, no way, no way, phase one has commenced. Somebody give them a shout. Amen. Because we know what the end of that process is. So when they're in that denial and denial and denial, don't you get discouraged of people going, deny, deny, deny. That's where they always start. Amen. <laughs> That's where they always start. <laughs> amen. Amen and amen. <clears throat> and by the way, that word, somebody wrote to me and asked me about that. There are two words. There's an imposter word, amen, which is meant to shoot back to amen ra, and amen, which is the word we use. And it is what was recorded in the scripture whenever there was a declaration made, and it said, and the congregation or the assembly said, amen. Now, you may not realize this, but that was a legal procedure because it's essentially a vote. Okay, so when you're saying yea or amen, which is also in the scripture, yea and amen, so be it is your declaration. Now, when you're making that declaration, you are logging in on that matter. So when it says the people of Elohim will obey his commandments and the people say amen, they're voting it in, amen. right? They're declaring it. It is now amen. passed. It has passed. The measure has passed. Amen. amen. Yes. And the people have agreed. Right. Yes. And so this is what makes it now lawful. It now brings it in. And this is very, very powerful. And so understand that you should not just agree with things easily. Uh, you should uh, contemplate and consider. Right. And we understand that many things that you're now discovering in this moment, this spiritual moment of him ripping all of the lies off of these liars. I'm certain that there are many who are discomfited in this moment but this also was prophesied that he would discomfort you that he would move you to the truth somebody say amen amen yes and so we're going to start today in numbers chapter 21 and as we do i want to just encourage you um, to to know and understand that the things that you gain in egypt even though that is where the blood is put on the doorpost. So you were saved in there. You're saved wherever he grabbed you, right? You're saved in the pig pen. But that doesn't bless the pig pen. Amen? The journey of the prodigal son home begins in the pig pen. 
But that's not an endorsement of the pig pen. Nor is it an endorsement of the pig pen method to coming back home. Right. Amen? It is simply saying that no matter where he finds you, he will begin to draw you. Right. And that's what many of you have begun to experience. Um, and so, you know, they, they had a difficult time when they were transitioning. How many know what I'm talking about? How many know that uh, when people are coming out of a lie and moving into the truth, it can be a very difficult process. They like to try to bring the baggage from the past along with. But what about this? Well, what about this? And it's just nonstop, right? It's the part of the bargaining process. It's, it's trying to negotiate. But he doesn't negotiate. He's not running for king. He doesn't need your vote. He is king. Amen. And you do well to remember that. And in Numbers chapter 21 and verse 4, it says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. How many know that the way is narrow? It's difficult. This is what Mashiach said. He didn't say it was easy. He said it was difficult. And so people will become much discouraged because it is difficult. It's not the easiest way, which is what usually people pick, is whatever is easiest. You hear it all the time, right? And he says, and the people spake. Listen to this. When difficulty comes, often what people will do is blame the very people that are helping them walk through their breakthrough. Come on. Preach they that. will complain against the very ones who are helping them get to the promised land. Yeah. Yeah. They will complain and ruin it yeah. because they don't understand the process of transformation. Mm -hmm. You're transforming. You are coming out of one state into another. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so they came out of Egypt, brought us up, and, and they started to complain against Moshe. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? And I mean, when we came out here, people started to speak. Oh, they're just drawing people out there till they can die with no water. <laughs> Remember that? Get it right again, Meanwhile, they're drinking their fluoride over there. Yeah, right. <laughs> to die in the wilderness. For there is no bread, neither is there any water in our soul. Loatheth this light bread, our soul loatheth the manna. Wow. That was a mouthful. Yeah. How many can already smell trouble coming right there? Yep. You're like, wow, are you people really going to do that? When he's trying to walk you through a difficult spot, you're going to complain? Hmm. Complaining keeps you from raining. Better write that down. Ooh, Complaining good. keeps you from raining. Don't complain. Endure like a good soldier. And Yahuwah sent fiery serpents among the people. What's the result of complaining? Fiery serpents. You got fiery serpents in your life? Don't blame uh, Remnant House. Don't blame your brothers and sisters. Don't blame, don't blame nobody else. Look back and see if you complain. Have you complained? And you go, wow, I didn't know that complaining brings fiery serpents. Yeah, he's the same yesterday and today. So listen carefully. Yahuwah sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Yashadel died. See what happens when you complain? Mm. It's not a good look. Right. Amen. Yeah, it's going to be a hard road. You might want to get your mind wrapped around that now. So you don't complain. You want to tell your children, hey, ah, button that lip. We don't want to go around this mountain more than we have to. That's right. It's already going to be difficult. Don't make it worse. And he says, therefore, the people came to Moshe. Oh, now you want to come to Moshe. Isn't it funny? The very person they were complaining to is the one that Elohim is going to use to bring the remedy. Hello? Yeah. Therefore, the people came to Moshe and said, we have sinned. Oh, well, at least you recognize it. For we have spoken against Yahuwah. See that? People talking against the miracles that he does, you're speaking against his glory. Amen. You're touching the kavod of Yahuwah Sebaot. You be careful with your mouth out there. 
For we have spoken against Yahuwah and against the pray, the pray, and against thee. So he didn't. They also confessed that they spoke against Moshe, right? Pray unto Yahuwah that he take away the serpents from us. And Moshe prayed for the people. Now listen carefully. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moshe made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass, that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Somebody say Amen. Amen. And so, in this beautiful demonstration, we see a picture of Mashiach, right here, in the wilderness. Right? We see him, and those of you that know this, of course you know that this is spoken of in the Brit HaDashah, but nevertheless we go and look at this because you see that Moshe had to respond with a method that Elohim authorized. He couldn't just make up his own. Right. So he had to go first to the executive uh, and, and get his orders. And then he was able to execute something that would bless. Because how did they end up in this situation? Well, what Elohim was showing them is that they activated with their mouths, they activated the serpents. I'm going to say that again, real slow. The assembly that does not understand its authority can activate serpents. And the only way that you get out of it is repent, Acknowledge that you spoke and complained and submit yourself to Mashiach, who is king. And that is who is pictured on that pole. Mm. Amen. Amen. And so all complaining needs to stop. Do not be one um, among them because he will use you as an example. He will make an example of your life to put fear in everybody else. Amen. And so this is why... Uh, you don't want to be, that's not the kind of example you want to be, right? When he tells us to be an example unto the flock, that's not the kind he meant. Right. Don't be that example. How many you know every year somebody wants to volunteer to be Judas in the play called Life? Yeah, seems like it, yeah. Why does everybody want, why does somebody always want to play that part? Amen? And, and, uh, and somebody else wants to play other parts and it's like, no, you know, you need to be careful. You need to be wise in this hour. Amen. Especially in this hour, because presumption will get you in a lot of trouble as he's bringing in revelation and you're trying to drag old dusty bread and dusty dogma from churchianity in. You're trying to bring some of your dusty old stuff from what you learned in the pagan houses that they we already know they manipulated. You might want to just throw it all away and start again. You'll be better off. I mean, don't drag none of your books from Egypt out into the wilderness lonely get you in trouble. Amen. And so we see that he lifted up the serpent on a pole. So he puts a pole and he lifts the serpent. Notice that it does not say a cross. Yeah, that's true. Good point. It was a pole or stake and it had a brass serpent on the top. And so this was done by Elohim as a picture of what was to come. You all know what was to come. You all know what this is a picture of. But at the time, they had to just obey. And whatever Moshe said, they had to do. And how many know that as they had to look at that serpent in the brass, they had to look at that, they had to acknowledge that it was Moshe who put it up there. So they had to now recognize, because remember they said they not only sinned against Yahuwah, they sinned against Moshe as well. Okay, Yahuwah is trying to warn them before they get themselves sentenced permanently. They didn't get the message, but um, it was his attempt because he's not willing that any should perish. But he did reach a point where he said, that's it. Your attempt, they attempted murder against uh, Joshua, Yahusha, Caleb, and, and uh, Moshe and Aaron because uh, of the, uh, the ten spies. They got so enraged that they actually were going to kill them. And that's when Yahuwah called them to the tabernacle and said, that's it, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Gave him a 40-year sentence for attempted murder. Okay. okay. Don't think for a second that he's going to look the other way when you attack his anointed. Right. He is not. He's very jealous, 
and he does not flinch to defend his anointed. Doesn't flinch. Started killing all Israel. Started killing them. Like, oh, you, oh, you want to, oh, you want, oh, you want to mess with my anointed? I've been protecting you from these serpents. Oh, okay, I'll just lift my hand. You see that? And then he made him go through a process to get back to safe again. Why does he do that? Because he wants you to understand that this is a battle of words. All right, this is a battle of words. It's been going on since the beginning. And if you lose your, if you have loose lips, you'll sink ships. Amen. So we need to be careful with the words we say. We see this when they go to Jericho, don't we? Yeah, we do. We see that. Okay. And, and that is not acceptable. So we're going to get there. We're going to get to that part as well. Deuteronomy chapter 23, uh, he says that he that is wounded in a stone. So he's going to tell us now about the assembly. And for those people that think it's just for anybody and everybody, let's look at the rules. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy member cut off, wounded in the stones, means you got talked into getting snip snipped. All right? And shall not enter into the congregation of Yahuwah. Whoops. A bastard. Y'all need to read this. It's the seventh slide. He ain't playing. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of Yahuwah. Even to this tenth to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of Yahuwah. So how does he feel about that? I don't need to talk any more about it. There it is right there. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of Yahuwah. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of Yahuwah forever. So they can't enter no matter what they do. Forever means forever. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way. What? Yeah, because of the way they treated you. Not because of the way they treated me. The way they treated you. Because you mistreated my servants, you Ammonites and Moabites. Guess what? Guess what you get for that? You get to stay outside. Forever. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt. They had no love nor respect for you. And because they hired against thee, who? Balaam. They hired Balaam. Instead of coming and giving you bread and water and helping you along the way, nope, they tried to curse you. Yeah. They tried to stop you. How many know that there's people out there that have tried to curse what Elohim has blessed yes. and brought upon themselves swift destruction? Yeah. With their, I know Hebrew, I'm okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Balaam, the son of Beor of Pethor of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Nevertheless, Yahuwah, thy Elohim, would not hearken unto Balaam. Listen to that. Those people cursing, and, and he's not listening to them. He won't let them curse you. Are you hearing this today? Amen. But Yahuwah thy Elohim turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because Yahuwah thy Elohim loveth thee. Wow. Huh? Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. Right? So when your enemy is trying to curse you because you obey, and if you stay in the place Elohim has called you, you obey his commandments, guess what? Those curses will not land. The scripture tells us that a curse causeless will not alight. It will not land. Okay? And so what happens to that curse? It's got to go somewhere back to the sender. Return to sender. Right. Address unknown, no such number, no such zone. <laughs> you sent that one back to him, okay? You can have your curse back. And guess what? Since you gave it to me, you can have it back. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Enjoy that. You can have it. Press down, shaking together, and running over. And that'll teach you never to blaspheme again. Mm. All right? And this is the kind of power that the assembly have, and we need to understand it. Do you not recall that Paul, uh, he said, give that one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the soul would be saved? It's a lot of power. That's the power they wish they had. Mm -hmm. The problem is mm -hmm. they're not walking with him. 
Okay? And so he said that. He said that he turned it into a blessing. So even the enemy who curses you cannot really curse you. If you, st if you simply stay with Yahuwah, your enemy who is trying to curse you cannot curse you. It will turn into a blessing. He'll turn it. Mm -hmm. Amen? And by the way, as I shared this with Mama last night, so you need to be grateful for your enemies. Yeah. Because there's a patch, you know, that you got to get on your uniform that you can only get from an enemy. That's right. You have to love your enemy. You need one of those. Ooh, i got to go find an enemy. Yeah. You've been nice to everybody. You don't have any enemies? Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you got to preach that word, right? <laughs> Well, sure enough, we have enemies. And if yes, you love them, well, then you get the love your enemies patch on your on your crown or the, the, the gem on your crown for having done that and loving your neighbor as you love yourself. And so even your enemy, if he's hungry, you feed him, clothe him, help him. Amen. Don't forget that. Because in so doing, you demonstrate that you are a son and a daughter of the Most High. Amen. And so they hired against him Balaam, the son of Beor, uh, Beor of Pethor, uh, to curse. How many know that this is not a new concept? They're still hiring cursors. They're still hiring people to put people under spells. They're doing it every day. They're paying people to go out there and sing you stupid songs and give you stupid shows to watch and nonsense, all to curse you. But Elohim has made a promise here. He will turn their curse into a blessing. Somebody say amen. amen. So we as the Ecclesia declare all curses made and declared by all of them shall now be as the curses of Balaam and they shall be turned into blessings in the name of Yahusha. Amen. amen. So be it. The end. <laughs> Speaking of Yahusha, turn with me to the book what in your uh, scriptures will be Joshua, um, but it's Yahusha, in the seventh chapter. And this is the chapter when they are going against Jericho or Jericho. And this is a time of great breakthrough. Now, let's get the scene before we go here. They spent 40 years waiting for Jaime. You know what I'm talking about. They had to wait for the last one of that generation to perish. Right? Everyone 20 and over you dying in the wilderness. The oldest person going into Yeriko, 39. 39. Every, 39 and under, except for Joshua and Caleb. They were the only exceptions. Yahusha and Caleb. And so here they are at the, the brink of it. And you guys may remember that Yahusha says to them, we're going to go around the city and you're not going to say a word. He's like, look. I can already tell you, we already just went through this 40 years because people went and spoke what they shouldn't have spoke. They didn't understand the power of their words. They didn't understand what they did to the assembly. They destroyed that whole generation with their mouths. And so when it came time to go to Jer Jericho, Jericho, he's like, listen, we're gonna blow the horn. You ain't gonna say a word. We're gonna walk around, we're just gonna blow. And we all know how that story went, right? And the walls of Jericho fell down. And for those that think that the name of Yahuwah is this gigantic secret that nobody knew, well, how did a hooker, a harlot in Jericho know his name? Okay. Well, she recites it to the two spies and says, the whole land is in fear because we know that Yahuwah has given it to you. Mm -hmm. So it was not no secret. His name was noised all over the earth. There was a group, however, that wanted it to be secret, and they failed. Somebody say amen. Amen. Yahusha, chapter 7 and verse 20, there was a man who decided to help himself to that which belonged to Elohim. And Achan answered Yahusha and said, Indeed, I have sinned. So this man... Under command of the king, uh, the command of the king was that all of Yeriko, which was the first city, so the first fruits belong exclusively to Yahuwah. Amen. So what do you think he was teaching them there? 
And this man did not want to listen. He decided to grab a few things for himself, you know, because, you know, the battle was hard. And hey, I want some things. Guess what? We're about to find out. And Achim answered, Yahushua, and said, I have indeed sinned against Yahuwah Elohim of Yasharel, and thus and thus have I done. So he finally confesses, uh, after they finally narrowed it down to who it was through the, by the Ruach, and he says, when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, I'm just going to let that sit there for a minute. A goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels. Wait, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So Yahusha sent messengers and they ran unto the tent. And behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Yahusha, and unto all, listen to this now, pay attention, and not just to Yahusha, not just to the leader, mm -hmm. to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yahusha was now in Moshe's seat. So he still needs his assembly, right? He still needs to assemble. And unto all the children of Yasharel, and laid them out before Yahuwah. And Yahusha and all Yasharel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons. Pay attention. They don't want the silver anymore. They don't want the gold anymore. No, no, no. You're going to get to keep that. Oh, no, you're going to get to keep it. Right? Let your money perish with you. Watch this. And the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters. But that wasn't all. He took his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Yahusha said, Why hast thou troubled us? Whew. Yahuwah shall trouble thee this day. And all, everybody say all, all, all Yasharel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. And after they had stoned them with stones. Whoo! The assembly did some business there. Now, why is this so important? By the way, what made him worthy of capital punishment? It's a good question. He caused the death through his disobedience. He caused the death of those who went after Ai, the very next city. Because of this sin that was in the camp as a result of his covetousness, the soldiers that went up against Ai, many died. Yeah. So he cost lives. Yeah. That's why the judgment was so severe. And many times people do not realize that their greed and covetousness is not just about what it affects them, but it's going to affect where it where those things don't go and what doesn't happen because of that covetousness. And so that is a capital offense. It's treason. He was convicted of treason. And it cost not only him, but his whole family was stoned. His name was wiped out. And now he is just an example onto the flock. And not a good one. Amen. And so the, you're all going to be an example. The question is, of what? Amen. Amen. And so endeavor to be a good example. And many of you may realize, may remember that uh, they had to go through an extensive process just to find who was possibly guilty. They had to sort it out. So this person didn't just run up to him and say, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. It was only after he was caught. And that happens a lot. Some of you have had some people that you've had to go through an entire investigative process. Well, at that point, if you confess, it's not going to have the same impact as it would have if you had confessed up front. Okay. Amen? Amen? And so this is why it is so important when you get an opportunity to, when he's opened the door for you, you need to run. Mm-hmm. 
Okay? This one waited until he was investigated. And once he was investigated, then he, he suddenly realized they're closing in on me. It's, it, it, they're going to find me. At first, he didn't say anything because he didn't think they'd catch him. Right. But they did. Amen. And look what happened. So this is a very sad story in many ways, but it is also reflective of the power of the assembly. And so uh, treason is, is not acceptable. Amen. It was appropriate that Judas die because he, tra he was a traitor. That's capital. That's a serious offense, folks. That's a serious offense. And if you think it's serious in a country, if you think it's serious in relationships or marriages, well, it goes up a lot of notches when it's about the kingdom. Amen. All right. And so just to warn you all, don't take lightly the things we're talking about and do not think that the assembly has no power. Right. Because clearly it does. Amen. Now, today we don't do this. We don't we don't act this way today. Um, but that doesn't mean that Elohim doesn't just still execute the judgment. So, you know, we need to be very careful and we need to pray one for another. And when we catch our brother in an error, what does the, Bible, what does the scripture tell us? It tells us um, that if we find a brother overtaken in a fault, right? Ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, uh, lest thou also be tempted. So it is, it is our responsibility to grab our brother who is getting into error and help him recover. And they're going to get mad at you. They're not going to like it that you caught them. They're not going to like it that you are calling it out. That's right. But bless the living Elohim. They'll love you when they're not That's in hell. Right. Come okay, on. they're going to love you that they're not in hell. That's right. They're going to love you. They're yes. going to be like, oh, I'm so thankful. Thank That's you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for loving me enough to come get me. You know That's what I right. mean? Have you ever had a friend like that? That you had to go back and thank? Mm -hmm. That you had to go back and say, you know, yes. Not for nothing, but thank you. Thanks for having that kind of courage. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's what many of you are. Uh, you have a heart like unto the one he gave unto me, like a Joseph heart, where you know your brethren are going to hate you. You know they ain't going to be liking you. They're going to be mad at you. You just blew up the spot. Yep. Okay, you just told them something they didn't even know when they've been doing something wrong for 20 years. They're going to hate you. Okay? They want to sell you into slavery and get rid of you. Little do they know that you're the very vessel Elohim will use for their freedom. Yeah. And then they'll thank you later and they'll feel really foolish. So some of you are in the process of that very thing. Where they've, you're, you're, you're just at the early stages of the Joseph story. <laughs> where they're throwing you into a pit. Or maybe they've already sold you into slavery. But don't worry. Elohim sees all. And he will use you to set them free. And then they will regret. Amen. Even as the children of Yashorel did in fact regret and wept before Yosef. But well, Yosef wept too, right? Because he bore no ill toward him. He ain't mad at him. I love you all. I know y'all got mad at me, but that's all right. <laughs> Elohim sent me ahead so that you wouldn't die. Amen. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10, this is a passage that is quoted often. And it's what we began our discussion on today. And it says, the name of Yahuwah is a strong tower. Amen. So it's not Baal, right? Which is what they replaced it with 6,800 times. They replaced his name with Baal, the English version of Baal. And it's being restored. This is the great awakening that's occurring right now, which is a wonderful thing. So it's very specific. This is why they changed it, because they didn't want you to have the result that this thing would produce. So they modified it, which modified the results. Amen. And your enemy is extremely clever. So take a look at this. It says, the name of Yahuwah is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. You see that word safe? Yes. All right, let's take a look at that word in the scripture. Shall we? Let's dig a little bit. Because people think it means saved in the salvation sense. But actually, it means something extraordinary. It is sagab, okay? And it means exaltation. Wow. So think Ephesians chapter 2. Mm. Seated in heavenly places. 
And it says to be high, to be inaccessibly high. In other words, you can't be reached. It means to be too high for capture. Do you see this? To be high of prosperity. To be set on high, be safely set on high. To be exalted of Elohim. To act exaltedly. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to act exaltedly. And why? Because the name of Yahuwah is your strong tower. Now notice he didn't say everyone on earth runs in. Now, that's not what he said. He said the Zedakah, the Zadok run in. And they are safe. They are exalted. They receive exaltation. Why? The name of Yahuwah. Some of you right now are dancing. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're going, oh, come on. That's good. I didn't know that. I didn't see that, right? And so <laughs> now something that he says in Psalm 91 will make a little more sense. And again, these are all the benefits of being part of his assembly. Notice he did not give that to everybody. Right. So he has to first consider you part of this. Then he speaks that blessing. So many people want to come and rob the house. Are you staying? Oh no, I just need some supplies. Yeah. Many. Yeah. Oh no, you didn't. They come to the word, the scripture, to build their own thing. I mean, no, that's, that's, that's just got disaster written all over it. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. And in Psalm 91, in verse 13, thou shalt tread, so he's prophesying concerning you. Listen, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. This is spiritual, folks. This is those who are trying to control you, right? Your enemy walks about like a roaring lion seeking to be made devour. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And what about the adder? The adder is a snake. What did we just see here? The young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will what? Set him on high. Well, now it's starting to come in. Ah, well, well, well. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Amen. So we're word. seeing the exaltation comes by knowing his name. And it doesn't Amen. just mean the spelling and the pronunciation because Achan knew how to spell his name. He even said, I've sinned before Yahuwah. Mm. But what he didn't know was the character. He didn't know him or he would never have touched the first fruits. He yeah. shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. When? In trouble. So, are you going to avoid trouble? No. He's going to take you right through trouble. See, this is a concept you've got to get your mind around. It's not an American concept. Americans like Tylenol. They want pain relief for everything. He said, I'll be with him in trouble, in tribulation, in difficulty. And I will deliver him and honor him. I wonder why he would honor that person. Well, maybe because that person honors him amen he said don't touch it they don't touch it he said leave that alone they leave it alone not Aiken. Aiken thought he was all that and a bag of extra silver coins uh -huh. he thought he was worthy of that babylonian garment he thought he could just get everyone to look the other way do you understand that this is a serious matter and this was remedied in the assembly because it costs the assembly there's people that are perishing because of lack of knowledge. He said it. He said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Amen. And why is it that they have a lack of knowledge? Jeremiah 23 tells us. Because woe to the pastors who scattered the sheep of my pasture and went off following Baal. Balaam over here cursing the people so that they could control them. Why do you think he wanted them cursed? Because you can control the cursed people. They're full of vices. You got no power over the sovereigns filled with virtue. Selah. So.
Amen. Amen. And so this is why it is a big battle, and it's a battle of slavery versus freedom. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. For whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. And that's why he calls you kings and priests. You are a royal priesthood. Amen. Don't let anybody take your crown. Amen. Amen. And in Malachi chapter 3, speaking of this same thing, I'm not going to 10, so don't worry about that. But look at 1 through 7. Chapter uh, 3 of the book of Malachi, behold, he says, I will send who? My, My messenger. messenger. This is not an individual. This is the continuous sending. So he sends Messiah, who is the ultimate fulfillment. But then those who come in Messiah's name and power are also included in this. And you, my brethren, are included in this. For some families, you are the messenger. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. What's this? Yeah, that's what you're doing, aren't you? When you're trying to help people get water baptized, when you're helping them get in the name, you're helping them get into the strong tower, what are you doing? You're going in front of him before he arrives. Mm -hmm. right. You are a messenger. Come on, somebody. You are a messenger, and Yahuwah, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, and behold, he shall come, saith Yahuwah Sevaot. But who may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. Wow. Uh, yeah. Just go ahead and think about refining fire. And like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall what? Purify the sons of Levi. Well, well, well. He ain't going to leave you there. No, no. He going to purify the sons of Levi. And purge them as gold and silver, that they may what? Oh, look at this. Wow. That they may offer unto Yahuwah an offering in Zedakah, right. righteousness. Then shall the offering of Yehudah and Yerushalayim be pleasant unto Yahuwah, as in the days of old, and as in former years. And I will come near to you in what? Judgment. Judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling of his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith Yahuwah Sebaot. So there's a whole lot of people that aren't afraid. They should be. For I am Yahuwah. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Whew, that's a great word. We got to unpack that for a moment. First of all, he says this on behalf of his authentic sons. So he's not saying this on behalf of imposters, those who practice the things he says shall not inherit the kingdom. He's not talking to them. They think they're, a lot of times they presume themselves because they don't want to bother with the process of actual repentance. Just like the children of Yasaro were standing in there complaining, not even realizing how much trouble they were in until snakes started to bite. Yeah. Amen? And say, and he asked, who's going to abide in the day of his coming? And I've said this many, many times. Some people get upset at me. I'm like, man, you are intense. If you think I'm intense, wait till you see comes behind me. Mm, amen. So you, you might want to grab a hold of that intensity and, uh, and say, yeah, yeah, I need, I, no, no, never mind. I need that. I need that. Amen. And that's what that trainer's for. That's what, that's what that drill sergeant in boot camp's for. He's going to help you so that by the time you get out in the war, you're not, you're, you know what to do. Amen. And this is part of what we got to go through right now because, boy, it's getting, it's getting hot out there. Amen. And you need to know how to walk in your authority. But you also need to understand that you are not to stay in a state of independence. This is what Aiken did. Aiken made a decision with nobody. Nobody. I'm going to take care of me. Me and mine. Me, myself, and I. Right? Mm -hmm. No assembly. No discussion. No review. Why not? Well, because he knew. If he mentions this to anybody, he's going to get in trouble. That's why. Because of selfishness, because of selfish desire, because of selfish ambition, because of personal gain. This, this thing has not changed, has it? Amen. 
And so, amen. And so people, we need to understand that we have to be a people about our brother's business, about our brother's safety. He was concerned only about himself. That cost him his life. Amen. And so we need to be a people that are about our brethren. So that's how we abide in the day of his coming. And who shall stand when he appeared? And that is answered in the Brit Hadashah, that we may be able to stand before the Son of Man and give an account. Now, why would you be able to do that? Because you already got your spots and wrinkles removed. And where did that happen? In the assembly. Oh, man, you didn't get that on your own. You didn't do that by yourself. It doesn't work that way. Oh, Amen. Amen. You'll end up with a Babylonian garment instead of the garment needed for the wedding. Mm. This is why he's here. That's why he's bringing the anointing the way he's bringing it. That's why he's bringing people with fire in them. Why do you think you're seeing these men and women out there with a steel? Some of you got a steel rod in your back. Man, you will not back up. You have an uncompromising anointing going on in there, man. Elohim is bringing you to a new place. Okay? Uh, and those that come against you are going to find out you're not backing up. Why is that? Well, somebody put its fortitude in you. Okay? And so what is going on here? This is the moment, saints. This is the great awakening. This is the day of the brightness of the king's coming, where the wicked are destroyed by the brightness of the king's coming. They can't even stand in the same room with you because their lives are falling apart daily. They'll just kick you out of the fellowship because you keep blowing them up. Yeah. You keep telling them, well, that's not true. I, that's not true. That's not true. Why are you lying? Why are you always lying? <laughs> right? They're always lying. And so he has to purify that. He's got to purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. That takes time and put it in a fire real hot. Okay? That's not an easy process. And so he tells us that he's going to come near in judgment. And so many people don't understand that he appoints the assembly for judgment. He appoints the assembly for judgment. Take a look. Matthew chapter 18. You want to talk about the power of the assembly? This is the government of Yahuwah Sevaot. Watch this now. He says in verse 15, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Right? So, if you have an agreeable person, you have a person that's humble, and they say, oh, I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. Let me let me fix that. And we've all done that. We've all had something where we had to go to someone and say, hey, brother, you know, there's an issue here. And they're like, oh, I'm really sorry, you know. And it gets resolved. No problem. It happens all the time. But what happens when they double down? Watch this now, because now we've got some legal procedures that are starting to kick in. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established as it is written in the Torah. Right? And he says, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the assembly, to the ecclesia. But if he neglect to hear the ecclesia, so he refuses even the assembly, let him be unto thee. Watch this. He now just lost something big. Watch. Let him be unto thee as a publican and a heathen, or a heathen man and a publican. Okay? Verily I say unto you, whatsoever, notice this, pay attention, saints, because this is the power of the assembly that he spoke of when he spoke to Peter. Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven what is this are you seeing this saints this is the power of the assembly this is the power of Yahuwah's anointed that are set apart they govern they determine what is bound and loosed somebody say amen, amen. and so something's loose something running loose come on somebody something running loose in the earth whose fault is that He said, uh, your adversary walketh about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may okay. devour. Yeah. That word means he requires permission. Yeah. Where did he get it? It says in the book of Revelation, it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Who gave it? We know Elohim didn't. 
because he gave us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, that nothing should by any means hurt us. So who did it? People who abdicated their responsibilities as the ecclesia. That's who. That's why. Because we forgot who we were. We forgot our responsibility. We forgot that we were given the anointing to govern. Not the heathen or the publican who can't even apologize. Right. Right? Not, not the heathen or the publican who doesn't have an I'm sorry in him. Then you are disqualified. Just like Achan. Mm -hmm. You get to go sit outside. Destruction of the flesh. This is the government of Elohim. Take it seriously. Because as the, the household of faith comes together, this is the power that you're going to see confirmed by Yahuwah. He's going to confirm things today. He's going to confirm things in this very short period of time for many of you that have petitions before you so that you know for the purpose of knowing that this word has come unto you from on high. So he will confirm it himself. I don't confirm it. He confirms it with signs and wonders following. Amen. Behold, I have told you before. And in John chapter 8, and he said unto them, you are from beneath. And so, you know, many times people do not understand that Yahuwah has set apart his servants to, to elevate, to bring elevation. So we saw exaltation, that you come into the name of Yahuwah. What for? You're going to come up. You're going to be exalted. You're going to come into your proper place. You're going to repent. Where do they put the penthouse? Somebody help me. Top of the building. Top of the building. And re means to do again, right? Yep. So to repent. When he says repent, it is not simply changing your mind. It is not simply uh, acknowledging that what you did was sin. It is him calling you back up to your proper place. Amen. Seated with him in heavenly places. Seated Amen. with him at the right hand. Seated with Mashiach in the heavens. Not arguing with the speed limit. Declaring the speed limit. Not arguing with his Torah. Declaring his Torah. Not arguing with his ordinances and his precepts. Declaring them from the heavens. Now you're not arguing. You're agreeing. Somebody say amen. amen. And so this is what he wants. He wants us united and in one accord. With him and with one another. And so this happens by his Ruach. And so, of course, there are those who have, want to argue because debate is the fruit of the reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Debate is the fruit of the reprobate mind. Amen. And so this is what you saw with the Pharisees. And with, somebody tried to say the Pharisees were straining the law and doing all these things. No, they're straining a gnat and swallowing a camel is what Mashiach said. Okay? They were not hyper uh, uh, keepers of the Torah. John called them out and said, Who hath warned you to repent? Why would they need to repent if they were keeping the Torah so well? They were violating the Sabbath day every week. Mm -hmm. Weekly. And then they had the nerve to call out Mashiach's disciples. Reprobate mind. Yep. Amen? Reprobate mind. And so Elohim has given them over to that. And that's why they all they do is debate and argue. Right? And so what do we do? We walk right by them because we're not looking for them. I'm not looking for them. I'm looking for the lost sheep Amen. of the house of Yahshua. That's right. Amen. And John in chapter 8 and verse 23, and he said unto them, ye are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. This is the difference of those in the assembly of Yahuwah versus in churchianity. They're in the world still in churchianity. They're still connected to everything there. That's why they can't leave. They won't leave. And they're so attached to it. They just love king cities, don't they? And he says, I'm from above. You are from this world. I am not of this world. I said, therefore, unto you, that you shall die in your sins. What's this? Wow, so much for them being so super spiritual, right? They will die in their sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Why is that? Because there's only one name under heaven whereby men must be saved. Mm -hmm. And it don't begin with a J-hook. Right. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? Who art thou? As if they get to demand. <laughs> but they knew who he was. 
Enoch declared him. Enoch declared he who walks before the Ancient of Days. Who is this son of man who is before the Ancient of Days? They knew who he was. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Yahusha said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. <laughs> you don't know what that meant, but they did. Some of you who are Enoch readers know what he meant when he said that from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he speak, spake to them of the Father. Then said Yahushua unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, as you are so blind you can't see nothing right now, but when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Woo! Somebody give him some praise. Amen. Amen. And so he, he rebukes them, right? And he says, you don't even understand what you're dealing with. But he shouts back to the moment when Moshe lifted up the pole in the wilderness and says, even as Moses lifted up the pole in the wilderness. So when the Son of Man is lifted up, that's when you're going to realize who I am. I'm the one you have to look to for the serpents to quit biting you. I'm the one you have to look to for you to get saved, for you to exalt, for you to have your exaltation, your Kabbalah, your Zohar. You better get in Yahusha and right. dump the rest of that. Come on. Somebody say amen. amen. He is your exaltation. And no man comes to the Father but by him. Amen. Amen. And so this is what they were trying to avoid and still are to this day. They've done all kinds of nonsense and wickedness attempting to go around him. Attempting in every possible way with substitutes, with fakes, with phonies, swinging everything from chickens to nonsense over their head. But there are no exceptions. There is no other way. You must bow before him. Every knee shall bow. The only question is, when? Ooh, that's good. That is so good. And so this is why it is so important for us not only to recognize who he is, but what he came to do. He came to heal not steal. He came to recover, not destroy. He came to give life, not death. Amen. Our adversary comes to do stealing. Yeah, so he takes your stuff and runs with it. Killing, so he's going to try and get you killed. And destroying through lies. And he continues to do that same method to this day. That's what you all are awakening to. You're realizing that you were trapped by the adversary. But the king sent word. To heal you and deliver you from your destruction. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm coming in for a landing, saints. Thanks for being patient with me. And so finally, in John chapter 17, we see the prayer of Mashiach. And this prayer really answers a lot of questions if you listen carefully. He really explains things to us in a way that you wouldn't get any other way. First of all, he humbles himself before Yahuwah. And he cries out and he is making declaration over you and me because he says not only these, but they who will hear as a result of their work. And we are those as a result of that work. So we're included in this prayer. He's praying for you and me. Take a look. He says, I glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast gave, gave me to do, which thou gavest me to do. And now, O oh Father, Glorify thy, thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Okay. Right? So hearkening back to exactly what Enoch wrote. I have witnessed thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. 
For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Look at that. And so number one, he prays for us. He's praying, first of all, that his finished work would be received. He's about to go to that place, right? But he's got to make this petition first. And who's he praying for? He's praying for us, that we would have the breakthrough, right? Now they have known the things whatsoever thou hast given unto me are of thee. So now they understand that he's doing. Look at verse 10. All are all and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world. So he knows he's leaving. Right? But these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one. Echad. As we are. The Echad squad, united in one accord. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy what? Name. Well, well, well. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Okay? And so he, he makes it clear that he did these things and kept us in his name, in the name of Yahuwah. So not a secret, shared it with the disciples. They knew. We know that they knew. Because it was written in the Dead Sea Scrolls all over the place. So they all knew. None of it was secret. And, and all of, of, of uh, the disciples, except for, John, uh, except for Judas, who had to go through what he did to fulfill the scripture. Like I said, you're going to be an example. The question is, of what, right? And so don't be a bad, a bad example because uh, he will use that too. He'll use both. Okay, and he comes in for a landing here in verse 21. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So, our unity controls the way the world receives the message of the gospel. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Not two, not twenty, not fifty, not a million, one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. And so you see that the ultimate establishment of his government is the unity of the assembly of his people. It is through our unity that the world then says, aha, I need to come this way. And so when we have divisions, when we have everyone fighting and debating and arguing, the world has a different picture, don't they? In fact, in the 1600s, the reason why our adversaries got the upper hand is because all of those who are coming out of the fog of deceit and lies and all these fake scriptures that they were putting together, they couldn't unite. And they did that on purpose. That's why they gave them all kinds of different answers. And they wanted this group over here and that group over there because they're professionals at divide and conquer. That's how they have ruled for 6,000 years, but we are in a new era. And the lights are coming on everywhere at once. So it's not here and there, it is everywhere at the same time. They're running out of places to hide, saints. And the earth is filled with his glory. And so what is happening today is this promise, this prayer is manifesting before you. He's bringing us back to Echad. He's bringing us back into one accord. In his name, the strong tower. We're coming into the only name that by which men can be saved. There is no substitutes. You cannot enter covenant 
in some other name. You cannot substitute it. You cannot fake it. You, there's nothing else that's acceptable. When he sends an angel, it's for a reason. Amen. And he sent an angel with the name. You don't get to change that. You don't get to modify it. You don't get to play with it. You can bow before it. That's about it. Amen. And so what's happening today, what you're watching today, what we're going to continue to behold, what we're going to continue to see is the transformation of people operating in independent, separate, like a, a stick on the ground and instead being grafted into the vine. When you're part of a vine, you're no longer alone. When you're part of a vine, you're part of a family. When you're part of that connected group, you are never going to be uh, uh, attacked all by yourself. You're never going to be in a situation all alone. You now have family that are in it with you. You are in situations together. And how many know that that's way better than doing going it alone all the time? Yes. Even if all they're doing is praying for you, that's still something. That's huge. Okay? Even maybe you're on a mission. Maybe you're looking for something in there and, you, and you're like, hey, guys, pray for me. I got to go. I got to find this thing. And they're praying for you. You're a team. But if you have no assembly, if you have not assembled, if you've rejected that, if when they went this way, you went that way, how many know you got some repenting to do? You got to find your foal. This is what he prophesies in Jeremiah 23 prior to the coming of the king. Verse 5, he says the king will come. What's he say in verse 4? Go take a look. It's Shabbat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And so what's he want from us? He wants us united. <clears throat> back in our folds, back together, united in one accord, blessing one another, blessing each other with our gifts, blessing each other with the insight he gives us and wisdom and, and counsel, uh, the elder teaching the younger, um, uh, and everyone working together in respect, in love, yeah. in honor. This is how we move forward and no other way. And so you want to dawdle out there in Babylon? Help yourself. Try not to get stoned like Achan. Instead, I would recommend strongly that you pray seriously hard about Elohim showing you where you belong. Connect in with your brethren. Connect in. We're all coming into one accord. So it really doesn't matter where you connect in because if you're really truly connected, we'll end up together anyway. Amen. That's why it doesn't really matter. And that's why I just encourage you to find your place of connection. Find that which Elohim has ordained for you. And so this is the government of Yahuwah. And this is why Mashiach gave us this power, because it was always his intention that we would reign upon the earth in his name with him. This is what he meant. And this is one of the things that he speaks of at his return. He's going to give five cities, two cities, one city to people that were found faithful. Let's pray. Baruch Atah, blessed are you, Yehovah my Elohim, maker of heaven and earth and king of all creation. And I pray on behalf of all of our brethren, Father, we all have sinned, we have all erred, we have all spoken disrespectfully, we have all complained, and we repent, Father, for every complaint. We repent today for every word we've spoken against our brother or against our sister, in any way that we harm the power or the effectiveness of the assembly. And I pray, Father, that you would restore unto us that which Mashiach prayed for, that that prayer would be manifest in our midst. And now, Father, I pray for signs and wonders to confirm your word, that your people who are hearing this broadcast may know that you have set apart your assembly, that they may now be in unity before you for the coming the king is coming the time is coming to an end let us be united and father i pray that every demonic force every evil thing every satanic lie every uh wicked thing that has tried to prevent the unity of your people i pray that it is broken and i pray that every curse that has been leveled against your people would be pressed down shaken together running over sent back to the cursor and I thank you, Father, that you free your lambs, you free your children from the grip of sorcerers and those who practice idolatry and witchcraft. I thank you for it, that you would confirm your word with signs and wonders following. 
In Mashiach's holy name we pray. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Give him some praise. Hallelujah! Amen! So be it! I don't think I've ever in almost 30 years ever done four weeks on just the assembly. So, And there's a lot more to that that we could have unpacked, right? We could have gone to a lot of other places. But I do believe Elohim's point has been carried. I believe he wanted to emphasize certain things. And I believe we've received them. And so I pray that this message has encouraged you and blessed you and uh, has helped you in your uh, understanding of where you are now. And right now, if you look out there, you're going to see greater and greater awakening. So the people that were calling you crazy just a few years ago, some of you, now some of you just now waking up, but some of you woke up a while ago, they was calling you nuts and crazy and you're in a cult, right? Yeah, that's the big one. Okay, that's the big one. Oh, you're in a cult. You can't figure out who the leader is, but they know you're in a cult, right? right. And guess what? Now they're apologizing. Now they're going, uh-oh, because their Facebook's blowing up with his name. Their Instagram's blowing up, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere they look, they can't, they can't get away from it. And, and little by little, he's wearing them down. You know that, right? He's wearing them down. And they're, and they're going, um, uh, <laughs> we've watched it here. People that called one of our brethren completely crazy just a couple years ago. Now they're calling him going, hey, you know, you were, you were right about that. <laughs> yeah, right. So your vindication is coming, saints. If it hasn't come yet, it will. People will suddenly realize, wait a minute, wait a minute. I might have, I, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, and that's all right. And you know what? Be like Yosef, right? You just prepare your heart because the day's coming that your brothers will repent. The days are coming, saints, that your sisters will go, okay, okay, you were right. Be gracious in that moment. Remember Yosef. Remember how he wept over his brothers. He wasn't mad at them. He didn't get angry with them. He understood that Elohim sent him ahead, even as Elohim has sent you ahead. Amen. And so I pray that you've been encouraged and blessed. I want to remind everybody, if you want a printed calendar, please go on over to remnanthouse.org and let us know that. Get on in there so we know to send one out to you. And we haven't gotten them physically yet, but when they arrive, we'll be, Mama will be a package sending <laughs> anointed saint. Amen. Well, that's it for today. I believe that has... Uh, we've expired that subject for now, and I look forward to our discussion uh, uh, tomorrow night. I believe it's going to be a really good one, so please encourage our brothers and sisters to join us. We really appreciate that. Well, that's it for today. We bless all of you. We bless all the little ones, wherever you are, and whatever you're going through, know that Elohim has you in the name of Yahusha. Well, that's it. Thank you for joining us. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you, and remember... Yahusha Hamashiach, he alone is King of Kings. Amen. Land of milk and land of honey. of blessing and land of curse then that's in our hearts so dearly so far will sound and we will go